Hello, welcome to Dr. Boyson's Reality Check. Please do subscribe to my channel on YouTube and then also click on the notification so that we can send you videos as and when we load. Today we'll be talking about occupational health and safety management. And the first topic to deal with is basic concepts in health and safety management. Again, I am Dr. David King Boyson. What is occupational health and safety? Occupational health and safety, according to WHO, is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being of the worker. Physical, mental, and social well-being of the worker. So focus on these three variables, a complete physical, that the worker should be physically fit, okay? mental that the worker should be mentally sound and social well-being that the environment within which the worker works should be that environment that is welcoming that creates the conditions for the worker to be able to work very well and we're saying that it also involves the promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical mental and social well-being again these three key words but I love this part because it said it involved the promotion, the promotion and maintenance of the highest degree of physical and mental and social well-being of workers in all occupations. So it's some form of maintenance means that it's a regular activity that the organization seeks to do to make sure that workers are physically fit, they are mentally sound, and that the environment within which they work is that conducive for them to work and be able to produce more for the organization to achieve its objective. We are saying that it's also the protection of workers in the environment from risks resulting from factors adverse to their health. So occupational health and safety management, that aspect, now we dealt with what is health and safety. Now the management of the health and safety involves taking practical measures or strategies to ensure that workers are free from all forms of injuries and dangers to their health at the workplace. It also involves implementing uh, precautionary measures that prevent and or protect workers from injuries and dangers to their health and safety. And it is important to note that the management of employees' health, the employees' health, its management is not only the responsibility of the employer, but it is a dual responsibility the employee has a responsibility to also play. He has a role to play in this, I mean, management. The employer will provide all the tools. The employees will also have to comply. For instance, if the employer provides the PPEs, the employee must put these PPEs on. Objective of occupational health and safety. The first one is to maintain and promote worker, workers' health and working capacity at work. The second one is to improve the working environment and make work conducive to workers, the environment very conducive to work, and also to develop work organizations and work cultures. Cultures are the norms and the way organization does it things. And it is very important that the organization creates a culture that supports health uh, and safety at work, and also to promote a pos positive social climate that will enhance the smooth operation of the organization to achieve its production what level, to achieve productivity. So positive social climate is very, very important. Now let's look at some definitions of concepts and then terms. The first one is hazard. A hazard is a potential source of harm or adverse health effect on a person or persons. And we can also say that or any substance or material that can cause harm to the person or a group of person. Remember, the word potential here is underlined. Hazard is a, a potential source of harm. It means that the harm hasn't happened. And we are also saying that occupational hazard therefore refers to those aspects of the work and work environment that have the tendency, has, that has the potential that has the propensity of causing harm to, uh, to, to, to the worker, okay? And in ensuring 
employee health and safety at work, employers should put in measures, they should put in strategies to prevent or reduce the availability of those hazards from the workplace. So let's look at the definition of concept. What is risk? We are saying that risk refers to the likelihood or chance of something happening that may harm that person. So it is the likelihood or chance that a person or group of persons may be harmed or suffer adverse effect if exposed to a hazard. And an example is that if, if there was a spill of water on the floor, then the water would present a, a slippery hazard to persons passing through it. However, if the access to that area was prevented by the physical barrier, then the hazard will remain though the risk would have been minimized. So safety and health hazard sometimes that we need to know at this level. The first one is that a safety hazard. What is safety hazard? Safety hazard are those aspects of work environment that have the potential to cause immediate and very violent harm to the individual. It could be death, it could be loss of, I mean, some part of your body or anything. And we are saying that anything that can cause death or cause an individual to lose part of his body is a safety hazard. An example is somebody being exposed to a machine that can harm the person, that can um, uh, lead to the person's death or something. Acid or highly flammable substances that can cause death. We call that safety hazard. We have health hazard that we're saying that there are those work, those aspects of work environment that have the potential to cause harm to individuals slowly and cumulatively. That is very, very important. So example would be poisonous gases, long hours of work where someone sits for a very long time and might have a backache or a spinal cord issue, noise or high temperatures that can cause problems for workers. But it doesn't happen overnight. It keeps, uh, I mean, um, cumulating until it gets to a stage where the worker may not be able to do anything. We also have the biological hazard where these are associated with work, uh, working with animals, people, and infectious, infectious uh, plant materials. Um, you, you, may, you may be working in schools, daycare, facilities, college and university, and may be exposed to some of these things. So an example of, 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 of biological hazard include blood and other blood fluids. We have bacteria and viruses that, that, that can cause hazard. And coronavirus probably is one of the uh, yeah, biological hazards that uh, we, we have experienced uh, as humans uh, for a very long time. There are other biological weapons that we've seen, but the current one is coronavirus. And we have fungi, insect bites, and animal and bed, bed droppings, who, which are biological hazards. If the worker gets himself associated with that environment, it could cause um, harm to the worker. And then we have the fiscal hazard, which refers to factors within the environment that can cause a, a harm to the body without necessarily touching it. So an example is electromagnetic waves, like radio waves, high exposure to sunlight, ultraviolet rays, extreme temperatures and hot cold can also cause that. Constant loud noise can also cause physical hazard. Then we, there's something called ergonomics um, uh, in, in, in uh, uh, health and safety. Now, it, is, it refers to the human uh, uh, being and his work environment. So when we talk about ergonomic, uh, ergonomic hazards, we are referring to situation where uh, when the type of work that one does, the body positions and where the person is sitting, that condition puts some sort of strain on that worker. And they are, they, they are the hardest to spot since you don't always uh, immediately notice the strain. For instance, sitting behind a computer for very long hours can cause <coughs> problems to your eyesight. And so that uh, strain that you go through on notice is what we call the ergonomic hazards. Then we have also short-term exposures that may result in sore muscles. You sit for a very long time and you, you experience backache and all that. These are a type of economic, uh, econometrics, I mean, 
hazards. So an example of it uh, of, of, of ergonometric hazards are improper adjust, uh, adjusted workstations and chair, frequent lifting, poor posture, awkward movement, especially if they are repetitive. And then we have types of workplace hazards. The other one is also chemical hazards. And, and these are present when a worker is exposed to any chemical preparation in the workplace in any form. It could be solid or liquid or gas. And it's important that workers stay, uh, stay safer. They don't get near to these things. But the employ employer would have to create these conditions, this environment, so that workers are safe from this. So some, uh, some are safer than others, but to some workers, who are more sensitive to chemical, even common chemical solution can cause illness, skin irritation, or breathing problem because of our body, I mean, comp uh, composition or how we react to some of these things. Some workers may, may react very high to some of these things. Others might, might not react to these things. Some of them are, uh, some of the examples are liquid, like cleaning products, uh, paint, acid, pesticide, pesticides. They are examples of what chemical hazard that can cause, I mean, uh, harm to, I mean, workers. And then finally, we talk about the work organizational hazard. And we're saying that these are activities at workplace that can cause stress, activities, and it can also cause strain to the worker. An example of such I mean, hazards include workload. When a worker is being given more work to do, okay, and then the worker feels that, I mean, the time given, period given to him or her to execute that work, it's unreasonable. That can cause, I mean, organizational hazard. Workplace violence is also one, I mean, workplace bullying, lack of respect and lack of flexibility lack of social interactions and relation and sexual harassment. So we come to the end of the first lecture where we dealt with the basic concepts in health and safety. In the next lecture, we'll be dealing with issues regarding uh, health and safety responsibility and Rick's ass uh, assessment. Thank you very much for your time and then see you in the next lecture. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. Boysen uh, Reality Check, and then don't also forget to click on the notification so that we can send you videos at any point in time when these videos are loaded. Thank you for your time and see you in the next lecture.